Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, obviously we are reaching the end of the year. It's December right now. Doesn't matter what time you are watching this video, but I thought we should do a very quick follow-up or sort of a long-term review of the Nothing Phone 2 and see how relevant it is today and whether you should still get one. So without further ado, let's just jump into the video right away and let's check out the Nothing Phone 2's long-term review. Now, first and foremost, I think we should still talk a bit about the elephant in the room and that is the design itself. Now, I find that this design here is actually very evergreen. Very often in the market, we are seeing a lot of new phones being launched and they still look very generic as in they look like the other phone before and I know it is arguably like you know a still flat frames all around there's some curves on the sides that makes the nothing phone to feel even better but something like this is not something that you will see on other devices it's a completely transparent back panel again I appreciate very much the workmanship that's gone into having everything laid out so beautifully at the back and of course you also have those glib lights that again you still do not see as nice as this one on any other phone so the design itself for me is still a very huge plus point i personally prefer the white version over the black very much it's just so clean it is great and i still think it might be one of the main reasons you actually choose a nothing phone too that is to stand out from the already very saturated market all right now the second point that i think is a more important thing here is all about how does it perform today is the processor still holding up to its competitors is it still good enough for using today well the simple answer is yes now what we have here is actually the snapdragon 8 plus gen 1 processor on board and this is actually still a very efficient processor like i have not have any issues with you know battery life everything has been very smooth and i also noticed that i was still able to get slightly more than a day of battery life on this current software which by the way nothing has always been updating throughout the entire month so every month we will get a new update it doesn't matter if it's just for security but we are seeing a lot of changes to the os itself which i will talk a bit more later other than that the camera themselves has also received a lot of enhancements and improvements and i'm very happy to say that today the camera performance on the nothing phone 2 is actually very close to those flagships i'm going to show you all a couple of photos here again i was at genting not too long ago and i took a lot of indoor shots and you can just see the colors looks very natural it doesn't look oversaturated but it doesn't look that bland at the same time there's a lot of detail and you can see that the entire shot was very minimal in terms of noise now bear in mind this is an internal indoor setting and there were a couple of lights here and there making the entire environment quite challenging but still the Nothing Phone 2 held up really well and was able to capture the shots very nicely. Alright, so now that we've done talking about the cameras, uh, let's talk a bit about the software because I think that's where the Nothing Phone 2 really stands out. Alright, so for this particular section, let me just show you directly on my phone how you can actually set up your Nothing Phone 2 or maybe just you know, how you can play around with the widgets, the interactive widgets and why I think Nothing OS is actually very, very interesting. Let's check out the phone right away. Now I've got my screen recording going on and I think we can start off first and foremost with checking out the widgets that's available on Nothing Phone. So if I just go into the widgets icon here, you can see that we have here a ton of different widgets. We have different ones for clock, compass, Nothing X and all that. So let's just drag a couple of uh, icons out and see how it works. So we can just put this onto my next page here. Let me put my clock over here. I can choose a different kind of scale. Very, very nice. And I can also add in even more widgets. So right now I'm going to put in the compass. I like this compass one very much because it is actually a live compass, guys. Check this out. If I just move around, you can see that the, uh, the compass itself is moving around. So it's pretty cool. It's very interactive. Other than that, we also have even more nice widgets. I think we can check out the photo one. The photo one is a very cool app because you can actually add different sorts of photos to it. And I can add in this flower, for example. I can also add in this particular shot that I found quite interesting. So if I add in three photos here, notice that I will be able to actually swipe through the photos like that. Just check that out, just swipe it. And it already has the filter on it. So you can turn on or off the filter. But I think it's very, very interesting that again, this is an interactive widget. All right, so let me just show you a couple more widgets because they are really designed very, very well. So say for example, again, let me just pull out this weather widget. Again, a very nice one here. And we actually have a couple of information that you can see. You can see the uh, very quick icon right away. So it shows it's a bit cloudy right now. If you want to see more information, just swipe on it and you can see the temperature. And again, you can see the highs as well as the lows. So again, very, very cool in terms of this here. If you want to put in a couple of quick shortcuts as well, I think this is also something that you can do. So all you need to do is actually just go into the widgets once again, go into your quick settings. And this is super fun because you can actually choose almost practically any kind of 
settings. So say for example, I want to put a torch here, so I can just put that there. And notice if I just click the button, when it uh, turns red, it's basically turning on the torch itself. And usually what I would suggest is we can actually put in a couple of different ones here. Now, as you can see on my uh, desk right here, on the phone itself, I've got a couple of toggles, right? So it's super simple. Just tap on it to toggle the uh, whatever setting that you have already put there. You can have it auto rotate. You can also have your do not disturb turn on. So you do not need to drag down from the top and slowly you know, swipe through the list of the menus. You can actually directly you know, put in the toggles that you use the most on your home screen and it just makes everything so simple. Last but not least, of course, we also have the quick look, which is just right at the top here. You can actually choose to you know, edit it and show what kind of information. If you have any calendar events, it will also pop up on your home screen. So it's very easy to see and you can have it a uh, quick look at one single glance. All right, so that's just in terms of the widgets. What else can you do to your phone? Well, if you just go into the App Store, uh, the Play Store right here, and you just download the Nothing Launcher, this is where you can have even more customizations such as, you know, uh, changing the fonts, you can also change the icons, the folders, a lot of stuff. So once you've installed this, uh, let me show you very quickly what you can do here. First and foremost, this is what I would like to do, and that is to change all the icons to monochrome. So what I'm gonna do here is again, long press on the home screen, go into customization, and right away, click the icon pack, and you can see the Nothing icon pack is gonna be there. Straight off, you have a monochrome look instantly on your phone, guys. So it's pretty cool. Again, if you just tap the dark mode, you can just toggle it to become all white, which has this super clean, minimalist look, which is absolutely fantastic. Something that you don't see on other phones. Again, this toggle is just so nice to use. Other than that, what else can you use with this uh, Nothing Launcher? You can also hide applications. So how you do that is again very simple. So once again, you just long press on the home screen, click your home settings, and you can choose to hide app icons from your app drawer. So say for instance, you don't want your app drawer to be cluttered with you know, applications that you don't use very often. For instance, I'm gonna hide this, I'm gonna hide Google, I don't use that that much. Google TV, Home, there's a, there's a ton of stuff that you don't really want to uninstall, but you still want to keep on your phone and you don't want to see it in your app drawer. So we're just going to hide a couple of applications and let me show you how that works. So once you get out, notice that when I swipe up from the bottom, you can see that my list of applications are here, but they have already been hidden. You can always find it when you swipe towards the right and it's on the left. So these are all the hidden apps uh, in the from the app drawer. It's very, very clever. So that's basically it for hiding the app icons. Other than that, you can also change the way your folder looks. So I'm just gonna arrange this real quick. Notice that I do have a folder for Google applications. All the Google apps are inside. But if you wanna have a different shape, you can always customize it. Go with a circular shape. You can have a, you know this kind of shape as well. You can also put a cover photo at the top if you want it to look a bit more fun. So let's say for example, you wanna have this different icon. You can do that. And of course you can choose from a ton of different icons as well as emojis. So right now I'm just gonna stick with this uh, game console icon. And there we go, we have it right there. Obviously, if you want to minimize it, you can make it a bit smaller, but I think it might be better to see it enlarged because then you'll know that it's a folder sitting over there. We can also redesign the Google search bar. You actually have to go into your Google icon, you tap your profile, you go into settings, and right away, scroll down to the search widget and customize your widget. Now, I like this because you can also change the color of it uh, to all sorts of colors, pretty crazy colors if you want. Check this out, you can have like a super bright blue kind of uh, a search bar and let's have that for now. And there we go. Uh, another cool feature here is that uh, the camera has been updated with the lenticular filter. So what this means is basically you go into your camera application, notice that at the top, we have this filter button and you can go for the lenticular. Everything will have the nothing wallpaper kind of look. And let me just take a very quick shot right here. This is how it works. You can put it as your home screen and there we go. You have your uh, own wallpaper with that nothing lenticular look. All right, so moving on, now that we've done talking about the customizations to your home screens, as well as the cool interactive widgets, there's also a few more features that I want to show you guys in case you are not aware. And the first one is actually the split screen. So how this works is again quite simple. Say for example, you're browsing your Google Chrome, say for example, all right, you can just uh, go into your multitasking mode, tap that icon and click split top and you can choose another app that you want to see at the bottom. So for this, maybe I'll choose the Photos app, and you can see we have this split screen kind of view, and of course you can adjust it according to how you want the size to look. Another really interesting use case that I found with this split screen is actually say for example, having your YouTube app at the top, and of course having a browser at the bottom. So what you can do here is actually watch the YouTube video while also browsing on the internet. And I found that also, it might be useful for you in case you have this kind of use case. Other than that, you can also have the pop-up view. So again, just go into multitasking mode, 
click the pop-up view and you will have a tiny window that you can actually move around and place it anywhere on your screen. You can actually browse the internet while looking at your TikTok video. But if you want to close it, just drag it to the top and drop it into the remove icon. So that's in terms of the pop-up view. Last but not least, let's talk about the final cool feature here and that's about locking your applications as well as cloning your apps if you need to do that. So what you need to do is go into settings real quick, hit the apps icon and right to the bottom, you might notice that we have clone apps as well as app locker. Now, just like the name suggests, you can set a password and then you can choose which app you want to lock. So say, for example, you want to lock Instagram, you can click a tick on that. Or if you want to lock your Chrome, you don't want people browsing on your internet, you can just press that lock and notice that if I just click the Chrome icon, I will have to unlock it before I'm able to use it. As for clone apps, it's again very self-explanatory. You can actually just uh, click the toggle on to have another clone app where you can log in with a different ID if you need to use that. So those are basically uh, all the cool features that you can see with Nothing's OS, the cool widgets, interactive widgets by the way. They also have the cool customizations, very minimalist, and of course a couple of interesting features. By the way, the Nothing OS 2.5 is also going to be launching really soon. In fact, the beta is already out. But just looking at what's available on Nothing OS 2.5, you can expect to see a redesigned customization page and you can actually do a lot of tweaks in terms of the wallpaper, how your home screen looks. You can also get the new glass filter, monochrome color palettes, and of course, an even better use of gestures, especially when it comes to screenshots and all that. It's all going to add up to the overall user experience. One cool thing I noticed is that you can even set a customized shortcut to your power button. And last but not least is of course the overall improved UI design. So there's a lot of things coming into OS 2.5 and if you are already using a nothing phone, you might be aware of that, but do stay tuned for that because it's going to be quite interesting. All right, so that pretty much sums up my quick take, I would say a quick look at the long-term review sort of of the Nothing Phone 2. Again, I think this phone still holds up very well today, not only because of its unique design at the back, but also because of its unique software that Nothing is constantly updating to provide you with a very, you know, like user-friendly experience. Anyways, if you haven't got yourself a Nothing Phone 2, well, I noticed that Nothing Malaysia is actually having a promotion going on because it's Christmas. There's going to be like 400 and 500 ringgit of, I mean, I'm putting some details down below. Anyways, uh, if you have any further questions on the Nothing Phone 2 or if you have any suggestions as to how I can make my setup look better, I'm always looking forward to those kind of comments. Uh, feel free to comment down below. Thank you again for watching the video all the way to the end. I really appreciate you guys staying with me. Don't forget to drop a like and sub to the channel to see more content and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and stay safe. Oh, and uh, very advanced Merry Christmas. Take care. Bye-bye.